I'm Ben Shirey and this is the Self Storage Insight Podcast. On today's episode, I get to talk to a facility manager and learn how they were able to keep their facility up and running while large competition moved in right around the corner. Super excited to learn about the secrets they used to keep their business going as competition got tough. Welcome back to another episode of the Self Storage Insight Podcast. Uh, today, I'm joined by Blake Angle with Economy Self Storage. And Blake, if you don't mind, would you just give our audience a little bit of your background and how you got into storage, as well as a little bit about the facility that you manage? Yeah, um, actually, I spent 13 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, after getting out, it was shortly after that 2008 time frame, and was struggling to find a place uh, that I could call home, I guess you could say. And uh, I was training with uh, Edward Jones, and that didn't go so well because, of course, right at that around that time, nobody wanted to do a lot of investing. Everyone was just kind of struggling after that. Right, rough time but, to get uh, started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I don't regret it. I learned a lot from it, but I also made some connections with some individuals, and uh, one of them wanted me to take over and run his storage facility, and. Um, I'm glad I joined the team. It's been a very good for me. Uh, I've learned a lot and uh, I think I've definitely made it a home. Awesome. And so that was with economy self storage that uh, what, what year did you start there? I started in 2014. Uh, it was actually uh, a couple of uh, uh, partners that had started the place uh, back in 2002. Okay. Uh, at that time, it was pretty easy for it. They were the only game in town, so to speak at that point in time. Right. Uh, and since then it's grown quite a bit. Yeah. And I know when, when we originally spoke on the phone, um, as far as I first talked to you, you had mentioned uh, some of the some of the competition that moved into the market since you've been managing the facility. And so I was really excited to talk to you about that a little bit and see, you know, how have been some ways and maybe maybe I guess give the audience a little bit of a background on some of the competitors that moved into your uh, into your market. And then, you know, we can go over a couple of ways that you feel like you've been able to compete with much larger facilities. Well, that's, uh, that was the struggle. Um, this area where we're in here, Port St. Lucie has been growing quite a bit and, uh, the population has been booming. That's of mm -hmm. course attracted a lot of the big nationwide brand competitors. Um, right. I think we have all of them <laughs> now. Yeah. Uh, and as you can imagine, of course, they can eat losses for a time frame. Mm -hmm. Right. To get themselves established. Uh, they have a lot of um, money to invest in that location becoming a success. They have it down to a science for them. That's a formula. Mm -hmm. And that is, it can be intimidating to try to compete against, especially when they open one up two blocks from you. Right. But I think it was a combined effort, really. You know, they, um, both of the partners have years of experience in business. Uh, they taught me a lot. I, you know, came forward with a lot of budgeting ability, you know, running, mm -hmm. you know, maintenance shops in the Marine Corps. And I guess you could say putting all that together, we just decided to double down on what we could do, not focus on what we can't do, focus on what we can do. Right. A big thing that I noticed doing some research on my competition, if, if you're running a facility, research your competition, that's hugely important. What are their mm -hmm. trends? What do they do? How do they address it? Because it's, it's a, it's a repeatable plan they put into every city they go into. Right. So that means you can research it. You have you know, you know, the ability to look at what they do. And instead of focusing on trying to beat them at their game, because they are big real estate investment trusts, they have the money to eat losses. That's what they're banking on, running right. you out of town. So double down on what you can do. And we focused on customer service as our primary thing. Mm -hmm. Um, we also focused on just listening to what the people in the area, you know, need, what do they want? Uh, we have a lot of HOA communities in this area. So we try to put in, you know, vehicle parking, boat, RV parking, right. um, listen to your community, go to the town meetings. You know, if you're the people there are going to tell you what they need, what they're struggling with and be a part of your community. Mm hmm and so, you live there. So be a part of your community. Look right. out for their welfare. 
Yeah. And, and it is, it is becoming more, I guess there is more awareness now. There's been some media attention as well with some of what the REITs are doing as far as, you know, rapid rate increases, low moving yes. specials, and then jacking rates up. And, you know, that's, that's the game that they play. And, and it's really hard to play that game with them because and they wrote they have, a book on it. Yeah. They, they Okay. Yeah. But, um, have you used, have you been able to use that as far as to your advantage with some of that being more common knowledge now? And when customers come in looking, you know, looking for price, how do you compete with that customer that's looking at both facilities, I guess? And, and what's your, what's your sales pitch on something like that? I think one of the big things we did was we looked at exactly how much do we need to stay open and everyone be comfortable. We set our race based on that. And then our customers, each and every one of them in the contract, get a guarantee that rate's not going to change for up to a year. We set it for a year because, of course, insurance prices, land, right. property taxes, and all that may change. And that may impact our bottom line. Mm -hmm. So we said, your rate's guaranteed for up to a year. It will not change. Right. So you haven't tried to adjust your move-in specials or anything to kind of match what they were doing, even though they're right down the street. You just keep your rates the same and go in with the, more of a transparent approach. We actually played a little bit of a game with that. So we adjusted our rates a little bit based off of what they were putting in as our, their move-in specials and things like that. Mm -hmm. And what we noticed is that they're not going to be outbid. They're just going to keep lowering their rates right. to try to get you to keep losing money. Yeah. So we said, we're not going to play your game. Fine. That's our rate. That's it. It's set. Mm -hmm. And what we noticed was over time, they ended up actually just adjusting their rate to about $5 below ours. Okay. Yeah. Cause they're looking at all of the market rates. Cause I mean, again, they're in every market. And so usually their pricing is dynamic based on what's around them. Uh, so yeah, regardless of what you do, they can go lower. And, but the, the, on the backside of that too, is they don't really care about the customer experience whatsoever. Right. No, and so don't. when you come in with, you know, yeah, they might be a few dollars cheaper when you move in, but we actually focus on our customers and we do things to create a great customer experience you know, they're not going to compete with you in that area. So it's really awesome that you kind of drove that home as, as what was going to keep you there and what was going to keep the business going. So, yeah, that's awesome. We actually have, we actually have customers that'll uh, come over from some of the big real estate trusts after about three to four months when their rate practically doubles. Mm -hmm. And we'll, you know, when we come, when they come over to us, we will simply tell them your rates guaranteed for a year. It's not going to change. So you know what, how much it's going to cost you for how long you're going to be here that's not going to change. And that right. actually makes them very happy. They're comfortable now because they have the ability to look forward and know exactly how much, you know, they're going to spend on their storage facility. Right. Right. Rather than every 30 days checking to see if their price for the next month is, is, is going up. So awesome. Now, is there, is there anything aside from the 12 month guarantee that you give the customers that you do as far as to try to create a, a better customer environment or anything you focus One on? One of the things that we, one of the things that we saw happening a lot was also people were being uh, closing times on their homes. Closings were being pushed back. Mm -hmm. uh, closings were, you know, up in the air sometimes, or uh, they'd be told they were going to close. Next thing you know, it's next month. Um, we don't hold anyone to a move out date. So we've okay. sacrificed our ability to forward project and make reservations in the future the only compromise we made in that was we're saying we're not going to prorate your move out. Right. So we said, we don't care. You can come in here and tell me every month you're planning on moving out. Don't worry about losing your unit. Don't worry about your contract changing. If that doesn't work out, great. You know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we just don't, we cannot guarantee someone a proration on move out. Right. And, and there's a lot of facilities I think that operate that way as well, as far as not prorating out. Once you pay, you pay for the month that you're in. You, as far right. as you, you do all of your billing on the first, then I assume based on the prorate yes. out. And then, um, yeah, as far, as far as with the move outs, then if they hit the first and they didn't clean their unit out, what's your policy on that? Do you bill on the first for the next month? If their unit's not cleaned out, they pay for another month and that's how it just continues month to month after that. Right. Okay. Cause yeah, I, I mean, I talk to storage facility owners that do it every different way. And I mean, I hear some crazy things, but that's pretty common as far as, you know, to not prorate out and to, uh, because it does give you a little more flexibility as the business too. Um, you can't, you can't list that unit until it's cleaned out anyway. So exactly. Um, right. 
And then as far as, so uh, if you don't mind, if we could talk about marketing maybe a little bit, as far as getting your units filled, even with, you know, REITs right around the corner, how, what, what type of marketing do you guys typically do? And what have you found success in as far as uh, getting customers to the facility? I will say having a, a nice Google map spin, you know, having mm-hmm. some kind of online marketing in that way does work. Uh, we have our website, uh, we have our Google maps advertising, but beyond that, the biggest thing that has been successful for us is word of mouth. Okay. So having a good reputation is key. So right. give great customer service, have a great customer experience, and that's going to bring you more business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you do any type of referral program or do you just, as far as you just have customers that, that like you enough that they, they go and tell their friends regardless of incentives? We try to, we definitely try to, if, if it's a current customer and they're bringing us someone in, we will try to, you know, bend over backwards to try to accommodate that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing that we did was we actually got in line with a lot of local movers. So supporting them, if they, if they have a, if they are customers of theirs are bringing us a great customer experience with those movers, you're on our short list. Okay. And so we will, if we know someone's moving, because of course, you know, we're moving in self-storage. We also do U-Haul. We will give those movers that business. Those are local movers also in our area. So that's perpetuating, you know, focusing on and supporting small business. Right. And then those movers also will then bring us their customers in as well if they need storage. And that's been a great, that's been a great boon to us. Okay. And so you mentioned that you also do U-Haul, you rent U-Haul trucks, I'm assuming from your, from your facility then? Yes. Okay. How is, does that seem like a decent uh, additional thing to offer for getting people into the door as far as to have that availability or do you not see a big uptick? Uh, that? That's been uh, excellent. Okay. We, uh, if someone's bringing in a one-way rental uh, through U-Haul. We of course give them a one month free storage uh, because we know we're going to make business off that truck also. Mm-hmm. And it just, that meshes so well with a storage business. It really does. Right. And if you're willing to put the work in, you can also make some money with the U-Haul side of the business as well. I, I appreciate also that U-Haul doesn't do, uh, they don't do those contracts with the big real estate trusts. They don't do it. Mm-hmm. They, right. they try to focus on the small business aspect also. That is nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And so I guess with managing, with managing the facility, uh, how how large did you say, I guess you didn't say how many units you, you have currently at the facility. About 640. Okay. 640. And what do you find as far as throughout the month that takes up the most amount of your time with, with managing that facility and maintenance? (laughs) Uh, It's one of those things where looking at what you can do versus what you can't do. Um, cost of maintenance will get away from you if you don't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And instead of paying someone else to do everything else, uh, look at what I can do. So there's no reason to pay someone to go and do some minor maintenance, replace light bulbs, cleaning and things like that. I would rather pay my employees for that extra mm-hmm. effort and save a little bit of money in the long time too, you know, because right. you're paying someone else to do it. They're trying to, they're going to charge you way more mm-hmm. because they have their own expenses and all that. They're running a business as well. For sure. So I can instead pay employees who are going to be here anyway and give them extra money in their pocket to do a little bit more. That makes mm-hmm. more sense. So right. that was a compromise that was made. We do a lot of our own maintenance in house. So, okay, but it also means you're putting your eyes on it every day. Right. So you know what's going on at your facility and you're paying more attention to it. And that's been a side extra benefit. I know right. everything that's going on at my facility every day. Yeah. And it's also a benefit on the on the customer side as well, added security. If there's somebody that's always at the facility, I feel like that's a good security measure, you know, that um, people are working there, that sort of thing. They know that the, the property is being taken care of in-house. I mean, I feel like there is a customer aspect of that that also benefits the business too. So 
they that's it's something we we actually get a lot of compliments on that they always say that we always see someone there taking care of something so they feel the property is well taken care of and right. it's someone that has their self-interest in the property being taken care of as well mm -hmm. uh they <laughs> we have so many compliments from people saying our cus our facility is extremely clean awesome yeah, and that's a, that's an important piece that you know if if you don't have on-site management or somebody that's there all the time, you can't really control that a whole lot, you know, as far as um, without having somebody there. I get uh, one of the questions I always like to ask uh, with managing a facility for for the last ten years or so. I'm sure you have some some crazy stories of of things that you've ran into. <laughs> is there any is there any specific crazy story that would stick out in your mind of something that happened at the storage facility? I think the thing that drives me crazy every day is people forgetting how to close doors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many people can't seem to remember to close doors. Uh, I don't know. That's something that drives me nuts a little bit every day. Yeah. Um, but the, probably the craziest story and it's a sad story also is uh, that there, uh, that the idea that there are people trying to live out of a storage unit, mm -hmm. that that I had never believed that that could have been a case or a true story until I started doing this, uh, and it's very sad. Yeah, but uh, it is something that you will run into from time to time. Right. Yeah. It, it is crazy how often I hear about it too. I mean, it, it's getting more and more frequent, it seems like, but um, yeah, it, it's very unfortunate. And it's also, it's also kind of one of them things where, you know, you have to take the per, the correct action steps, depending on what, what you know, the municipality or, or whatever you need to do as far as to make sure you get them out of there. Um, but, but at the same time, it's a, t a tough situation all around for sure. It's very tough. Yeah. You want to have a heart. But you also can't, you know, Put yourself at risk. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a fine line there with managing any business where some of those decisions come into play. And, um, but yeah, it's tough. So I guess, so with, uh, with the last 10 years or so of experience, what have you seen that's changed the most in storage or the thing that's maybe surprised you the most about the growth of storage? I kind I of put you, on the, put you on the spot with that one. <laughs> I suppose you surprise yourself sometimes thinking like, why, why is it growing so much? Why is it becoming a thing? And I know there's multiple factors. I think people are trying to get smaller housing, uh, trying to be more efficient in their housing. So versus having a larger house, but I can have a house and a small storage facility for things that I don't use it frequently. That makes sense. And I can follow that one. Mm -hmm. I suppose the thing that I can't follow is people having things in a storage unit for 10 years. You'll see that too. Right. And it's a large unit. And you ask yourself, why are you spending this much money? Yeah. Uh, and some of those people never even show up to their unit. Barely yeah. show up to their unit. Yeah. That one surprises me. Um, so I, I, well, I, well, I recognize that the housing uh, thing, people looking for more efficiency types of housing. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a sustainable goal for housing. And so having a small storage unit, that makes sense. But I, uh, I would tell people, let go of stuff if you're not using it. It's just costing you money and bleeding money from you. Right. Um, one of the more shocking things, I suppose, that I've seen in the uh, evolution of the storage facilities would be the idea of um, contactless and you know no one's on site storage. Mm -hmm. Because I see every day what can happen in a storage facility. So I think these ideas of just having these remote storage facilities where you just put your code in, you never see anybody. I can only imagine that that's a bad, a bad idea over the long run. That storage facility is going to get taken advantage of and run down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's those, a, people, those people don't care about your storage facility as much as you might think they do. <laughs> right. And I mean, I, I know a lot of them because I, I talk to, you know, different management companies and things like that as well. And a lot of them are now, you know, moving more towards the idea of like they, 
they have somebody that at least is stopping by the facility. Right. They'll 1099 somebody because <laughs> yeah. you have to have somebody at these facilities, you know, at least, you know, a couple of times a week or something where, where somebody's going at to least, the facility yeah. at least. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I'll be kind of curious to see how that one changes. Cause there was a big push for it with COVID and everything else. Nobody wanted to be on site anywhere. You couldn't get people in an office, let alone, <laughs> let alone a storage right. facility. But, uh, so yeah, I'll be curious to see how the next couple of years plays out with the, with the management stuff and, and the changes that they'll keep adapting. And, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting though. So I guess, uh, a kind of a, a final question that I like to ask is like, if, if there was one piece of advice you'd give to somebody else that's managing a facility, you know, that has some more competition coming into the market, which we, we're seeing that everywhere now, what, what would be something you would tell them? If they were someone trying to start, you know, a small like mom and pop, so to speak, or single uh, business, I would say be brave, be brave. Don't be afraid to take risks and try something different because your competition, the big chains, they're not trying to try anything different. They're trying mm -hmm. to go with their formula. So right. if you can break out and bring something unique to the table, that's what's going to set you apart and listen to the community you live in because they will tell you exactly what they need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Be involved, have a good reputation and uh, yeah. And that's, that's awesome. That's really good advice too, as far as, yeah, take some, take some chances, try some different stuff out, yeah. make sure, try to find something that works. So very cool, man. Hey, I, I really enjoyed talking to you today and uh, hearing a little bit about your story. And I also want to thank you for your service. Um, I always appreciate oh, you. And talk to somebody that was in the military and uh, yeah, it, I didn't, I didn't do that, but I mean, I, I definitely appreciate the ones that did. And so, yeah, thank you very much for that. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been good talking to you too. I, uh, I hope this helps some people out. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Self Storage Insight Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Just a quick reminder, this episode was brought to you by CC Storage. CC Storage is a no-cost property management software that allows you to pass the fees for credit card processing onto your tenants, freeing up some CapEx space for your business and helping you more efficiently run your storage facility. If you'd like to learn more about CC Storage, click the link in the description below, and we hope to see you again for our next episode.